JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about LeBron James sitting out today. I mean, they're playing the Golden State Warriors, the Lakers. And everyone was originally excited for the LeBron James matchup, Steph, and all of this. And he's sitting out. And he played in the All-Star game, and he's coming off of a long break, but yet he's sitting out for his ankle. And the real question is, is like, is this okay? Is this a bad look? What's the story here? Um, to me, it's obvious this is a bad look, and this is exactly what's wrong with the NBA, right? Like, because there's so many games, because... There's only limited number of really great, exciting matchups, a game that you're really excited, looking forward to. And now if LeBron James is not playing, there's really no reason to watch the game. I have no desire to watch the game, and I'm a huge NBA fan. That's the problem. That is the problem. So I'm really curious to see what they have to say, and then we can break it down from there. Time this year, especially compared to his other years with the Lakers. Every year it was 25-plus games except for the championship season where they, of course, had the long pandemic-induced yep. break in the middle. Are you surprised he's not playing tonight? A little bit because I just saw him playing in the All-Star game. <laughs> I know he only played the first half, 14 minutes, but – Yes, because he sat out the game before the All-Star break, played 14 minutes in the All-Star game, and now he's sitting out. It's not a good look. Oh. That's... It's not a good look. So, I, look, I think it's the exact opposite. You think it's a good look? I think that – so, you go ahead and finish, because my takeaway is about the All-Star game as well. But well, in a totally that wasn't a good direction. look for sure. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, to miss that game, the last game of the uh, break, before the break, then playing the All-Star game, now misses, not a good look one, because it looks like, oh, he actually could play tonight. Now, I know he doesn't play a lot of back-to-back, -back, so is he playing tomorrow when they face San Antonio? That would be different. But that's not good. And for the league, Nick, this has been something that's bedeviled the league for the last few years is your big names missing these huge games. I I'll be honest. Tonight, I was, like, really looking forward to this game because I wanted to measure the Lakers, and they've been playing well with AD, uh, and D'Angelo Russell's playing well, Austin Reeves. Like, they got it going lately. They're not just winning. They're playing great offense. Like, Austin Re or um, Austin's averaging 17, yep. D'Angelo's at 20, LeBron and AD around 24 against the, the uh, Warriors who've been playing well as well. So I really wanted to gauge it. Now you can't gauge so it because LeBron's not there. So that said quickly, I give LeBron a pass this year, this whole year. He's 39, he's in his 21st season. Yeah. I don't mind if he load manages. So I'm not like all up in arms about it like I might be about somebody else. But it doesn't look good because people saw him out there in Austin. Okay, so I so on the LeBron getting a pass and other guys not. Listen, Kobe, Dirk, and Duncan are fourth, fifth, and sixth all time in minutes played, playoffs and regular season. Okay. They are all ten thousand shy of where LeBron is right now. It, Giannis and Steph's career minutes combined is shy of LeBron Tony. right now. <laughs> Jimmy Butler and Dame, kind of older players combined yep. are less than LeBron right now. So, yeah, if there's anyone entitled to take days off, and as we showed, he hasn't taken much off this year right. compared to previous seasons. Here's where, and I didn't know what you were going to say, here's where we both thought of the All-Star game, but I thought of it in a totally different context. This makes me angrier at all the guys who didn't oh. give a damn about the game. Because I don't think LeBron is, you know, milking an injury. I think LeBron was is dinged right. and was why he missed the game before the All-Star game, why he missed this one. And I think he understood, you know what? Despite the fact that I'm in year 21 and I'm injured, or not injured is too strong. You know what I mean? Not yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm hampered, yeah. That th we are an entertainment product for the fans. Oh, get out of here. And I have an obligation Oh, I might even I can't even let him finish, honestly, because that's such BS nonsense. That is such BS nonsense. That is not what LeBron was doing. I have an obligation and he tried so hard. He played 14 minutes in an all-star game where you didn't have to do anything. Where you're just like jogging up and down the court. Like, I mean, like, get out of here. Don't act like he sacrificed his body to be in the all-star game to play 14 minutes. I mean, just get out of here. Seriously. 
I mean, that's such nonsense. Um, and if he is legitimately injured or has this issue, that's fine. But again, that's always been the problem with the injury report is that you don't, you, you never know actually, right? It's muscle soreness, knee soreness, you know, back spasms. You, you never actually really know what, how injured a basketball player is. There's no like actual good frame of reference outside of someone who's like clearly injured, torn meniscus, ACL, you know, something high ankle sprain where they're missing weeks at a time, getting surgery, getting a second opinion from a doctor, all of that. Now, I do want to say, like, I agree that LeBron James is allowed to sit out all the minutes he's played. He's, you know, played a lot of basketball and he's older, obviously. So I'm not there to criticize him for that. But he always strategically sits out at certain games. And again, sitting out for the Lakers versus the Warriors game is 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 where it it sucks. Right. And you can make the argument that he played in the last Lakers Warriors game and it was really exciting and fun. But like, that's what the NBA needed. And so I'm not necessarily even blaming LeBron per se for this situation, just more highlighting how the NBA is in a bad scenario, in a bad situation, because this should be an exciting game. Lakers versus Warriors. Two, uh, the two, essentially, this was just released, they're the two most um, highly uh, valued uh, franchises in the NBA. Two of the highest in sports in general, Okay. Um, I think it goes Lakers three, Golden State two, and the Dallas Cowboys one, if memory serves me correctly. Um, so like these are the matchups you want to see. Also, we know that these matchups are limited. There's only going to be so more Steph and LeBron matchups, you know, duels. So to have this taken away from us, here's the reality. I can guarantee you that the average fan, rather of LeBron not playing the All-Star game and be able to watch him in the Lakers versus Warriors game. I mean, that's just way more exciting and it actually matters and means something. Um, So, you know, this whole idea that like LeBron, you know, was doing this, you know, boost his, you know, boost his, his stature because he was, he understands it's for the fans and this or that, that's BS. And why did he never do the dunk contest? I mean, that's all the, that's all the reality. That's all the, the information and validation you need. If he really laid it out there for the fans, then why is it not, you know, why did he never do the dunk contest? I mean, I'll wait. You can't give me a single reason why. If he has the mentality of it's all about entertainment and for the fans. So that's just nonsense. Um, And again, you know, we're moving the target here for certain players. Um, And again, I I get it. But to compare him to, say, a Kobe or Tim Duncan or any of these other players, it's not fair because other players had different injuries and started at different points in their careers um played for different teams so they had so they either made the playoffs earlier or later you know it's it's all it's all relative here they're all their bodies are taking poundage not to mention that different bodies can take different levels of minutes and and intensity right um not everyone can just run a marathon right their bodies will break down other people can run marathons literally like every single day you have like these ultra runners who run like a marathon like literally every single day while if you take an average person, that body will completely break. So everything is relative. That's like saying, look how much LeBron can bench versus look how much Steph can bench. LeBron's so much stronger. Yeah, exactly. He's so much stronger, so his body can endure more. So using the minutes as a frame of reference to now like downplay how much wear and tear, say, Steph Curry's body has taken, it's just not fair because it's all relative and all proportionate. It's like me, you know, exercising and working out and then comparing it to my mom and be like, come on, mom, I ran five miles. Why can't you run five miles? It's like she's just as fatigued as I am, but it just takes more work for me to get as fatigued. So the relative fatigue is still the same. You understand what I'm saying? Um, So I, I take kind of issue with that. But again, I don't take issue with LeBron resting. In fact, I actually was a proponent of of load management because I understand the body. And I understand, I mean, again, I've come from so many injuries that I understand the wear and tear it can, it can happen. So I was like, yeah, that actually makes sense that they do it. But on the flip side, it also makes sense from an entertainment company, why it's awful. And that's why I am, I'm a huge proponent of shortening the season, huge proponent, make it 65 games. It will completely ruin the records. It will completely ruin. You can't compare the history versus, um, you know, the modern era. You can't, you know, like everyone's people will make less three pointers, right? Like all of those records will essentially be preserved and frozen in time forever now if you shorten it. 
but the season will be infinitely more exciting, infinitely more exciting, right? I mean, if you just cut it significantly, and again, cutting it by three, four, or five games doesn't do anything. But if you truly cut the season to say like 60 some games, now you're talking things really mattering. Now a five game losing streak, a three, four, five game losing streak, that can have some serious implications. It's a lot harder to be like down and then 10th seed and like work your way back up to the, the fourth seed or something, which we see happen plenty, you know? So it's just, it just makes it matter more. And then in that case, LeBron's not sitting out on this game because in a lot of ways, theoretically, the Warriors and the Lakers are kind of fighting for their own positioning in the playoffs. Like these are important games and LeBron's not playing. Switch that to football. And it's like, you're playing, you know, a, a, a divisional rival and they do everything they can to trot out Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes, any of these players. They're not like, ah, it's okay. We could just sit this one out. We'll get them next week. It's not like that. And again, I, they're different sports, obviously, right? We don't, you know, no one has to say, well, that's football. It's different. Obviously, it's different. But that's what makes football so much better. That's what makes it so much more exciting. That's what makes it so much more important. Imagine if basketball was actually only uh, 17 games. Seriously. Can you imagine how intense those games would be? I mean, if if LeBron James was able to just completely empty the tank and Steph Curry and all these players were just able to empty the tank just once a week, just go all out, every game would be like insane. It would be absolutely insane. And I'm not saying we should do that, but it is a thought-provoking question because the NBA is going to become the is going to become the MLB. Someone actually mentioned that in the comments the other day. Like, if they're not if they're not smart, it's going to be turned into Major League Baseball. And you know what? Once upon a time, back when baseball was America's sport and the national pastime, and everyone thought like baseball will be around forever. It'll be around forever. No one cares about baseball. They don't talk about baseball at all on any of these shows. No one cares about older people and maybe young kids before they realize oh, this is not that fun. Because there's 162 games and it's brutal, okay? You could lose 15 games in a row and still make the playoffs and win the World Series. I mean, it's just outrageous. There's just so many games. They play back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back to back games. Then they, like, travel for a day and they're back out there. So that's the problem so i don't basketball needs to make serious decisions and it's not like adding a four point line or having having like an led court you know like that'll that's what the kids want they want like you know flashes on the court and big bright lights like yeah that makes everyone excited no it's more than that it's more than that you need to have intensity that's why people love the nba playoffs that's why people love um you know the bracket march madness because it's the intensity and it's also the anxiety of, oh my God, at any moment, your team's out. And that's what makes football so exciting, obviously, especially in the playoffs, right? It's all one and done. It's like, oh my God, if they only didn't drop that pass or if only that fumble bounced this way, they would have won the Super Bowl. They would make it to the Super Bowl or they would get into the playoffs. In basketball, Steph Curry could literally go zero for 80 in two games and still win. And, and, and like literally still then catch fire in the next four games and rip off four wins. And there you go. Boom. He wins. Patrick Mahomes goes 0 for 40 in a game. It's just done. See ya. Bye. Goodbye. Later. See you next year. That's the difference. You can just fail at such a higher rate. You can sit so many more games and have it truly not impact the season. And so if it doesn't matter, then why does any, when, why would you watch? What is the draw? And that's also the problem that, and this is what David Stern did. He made the NBA all about the players. He made it a player-driven league. He made them the face, the Jordans, the Le you know, LeBron, all these people, Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, which I'm not saying was a mistake, but when it's a star-driven league and the stars aren't playing, then what are you left with? And that is the difference with football. Patrick Mahomes doesn't play. Ratings aren't necessarily taking a hit. People are still watching that game. In fact, a lot of people are tuning in to see like what happens with the backup. You know, especially depending on the story, everyone's like, ooh, who's this backup guy? Where is he from? Oh, he, he played in North Carolina? Oh, wow, he's actually pretty good. Ooh, you know, c quarterback controversy? Maybe not with Patrick Mahomes, but, you know, maybe like a Dak Prescott. Um, so that's the issue. That I mean, those are all the issues. And, I, I, and I'm not going to necessarily even blame the players. Um, and I can't even, you know, everyone always wants to blame the commissioner or, or blame the owners or blame whoever, but 
in a lot of ways, this was just the national, the natural progression of the NBA and what it became. And it was really kind of, you know, more like a death by a thousand paper cuts. But the league is in a bad position when I, a huge fan, doesn't care about this game. That's a problem. But yet me, also a huge fan of the NFL, is out there watching all the games, all the big games, watching Thursday night football, Monday night football, Sunday night football, you know, obviously watching my own personal team, then any other interesting matchups that I'm like, Ooh, wait, who, who are the Chiefs playing tonight? Oh, they're playing the Bills, which is like kind of equivalent to the Lakers and the Warriors. I definitely want to check that game out. Oh, the, the Chiefs are playing the Jets. I want to watch that game. I don't even, you know, it's like, let's do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're still excited for it. And that's what makes football so special. That's what makes it just the most dominant sport right now. And basketball has to make some serious changes because you just can't have this. But those are my opinions. I would absolutely love to hear yours. If you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And remember, I read every single comment. I read every single comment. And please don't forget to subscribe. Um, as I said, we are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. And again, also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really, really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. And I would be incredibly grateful if you could just hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much and see you next time.